Here's a real craft that we're building. I just wanted to give you an update on how to build it. Okay, I just wanted to show you this here. This is our real craft that I'm building. And I wanted to show you today how to build some aluminum. This is a spare ring that I had. Piece of aluminum. You're looking for an inch and a quarter piece of aluminum by four feet long. This one's a little bigger, but it'll show you the same thing that we're trying to do here. You're going to go ahead and take a uh, PVC cap or anything that's rounded. And all we're going to do is we're going to bend this aluminum around it. Now you don't need anything special, no hammers, nothing like that. Not on this part. You're just going to put it on there and bend it. It's bendable by hand. As you can see, I'm just bending it real easy. And we're just going to shape it right around this piece of PVC here. Now it's going to take a couple times of doing this. It's going to be a little off at certain points, but that's okay. We'll just keep bending it until we get it right. So as you can see, it's coming up and around it. So we got a good bend started here. So this will take probably, this is maybe a 10 minute project. This isn't real long. Should be pretty easy for anybody who wants to do it. Uh, once we get it rounded, we'll grind it and cut it off. But we got to keep test fitting as we do this. As you can see, the top part was a little too much. This one's not not quite tight enough on there. What we want to do is get it as tight to that ring as we can. Once it's bent, we don't want to leave it loose. We don't want to strap it to make it tight. We want it to be tight and then tape it. So anyway, I'll just readjust the camera here. And uh, we'll run this thing one more time. As you can see, we're just going to go ahead and keep bending. And every time we bend around it, kind of like a slip roller does, it's going to go ahead and add just a little bit more to it. As you can see, it's going to start tightening up the loop here. Yeah, it takes a few minutes. But you can start seeing right now, it's starting to come out with a better shape. Every time we do this, we bend in a different place. So as you can see, we're closer to the ring now. See? It only took us a few a few minutes. Pretty close. Now there's going to be some spots that are off. Like right here, you can see the big opening. And right there, all we're going to do is bend it back a little bit the other way. Because it's just one of the areas in there is just a little bit off. As you can see, it tightened that up. So then we'll go back around and bend it one more time just to get it right. And then once we're done with that, I'll just show you. We're going to have to mark it. So wherever it overlaps, mark it. And then all you're going to do is take your grinder here and put your cutoff wheel on it. Well, first you're going to take your square here and just make a straight line. So just a speed square. Basically anything that lines it up flat. When they seam together it's going to be important. And then a grinder here. All you're going to do is go ahead and cut it. Pretty easy. And then every time you put it together and check to see if it's tight. You're going to have to cut a little bit off. Work it back and forth until you get it. I go ahead and grab my uh, one I did earlier. So you can take a look. As you can see, uh, if I can get it straight, pretty much in line, squared up with the center right there. And you can see the seam. You can see it's flat. It's going to be straight all the way down. You have to grind it just a bit each time. You're going to get it. When you apply the glue and stuff, you got to get it on there good. And here I'm just showing the top and bottom. The reveal on it has to be just about the same all the way around. Uh, just makes it look cleaner. The tape goes all the way around and holds it. And then you position the tape everywhere around it. So pretty much self-evident. You can see what it is. But here's the glue that I used right here. And it's a contact cement. And you saw how I taped it. That's the way to hold it together. And it works great. Okay, now that we have our ring built, we have to build the coils. So what I did is I printed off a uh, 
a blank here for it and I'll go ahead and attach this to my 3D printed files but you can see I just bent the wire over I'm sorry my hands are in the way half the time here but all you're going to do is wind it right around the center here now it's going to be a little loose we're not putting a core in here so it's going to be alright if it's a little loose so I guess you could just see my hands anyway you press it down tight and then turn it again around here couple more loops press it down again probably needs a couple more at this point make sure that you get them in there good now once you get to this point we're gonna go ahead and put the other side of this thing on well maybe a few more loops all right push it down again we should be good take this top piece here we're gonna slide it right over the top and there we go hold it there you can see coils are nice and tight in there and then we're gonna just start winding again this is just like you're doing your weed whacker it's nothing real special here it's just getting the coil in there Make sure you don't get caught up in any corners. I've done that a couple times and had to unwind it. It really sucks. But we'll just continue winding here for a little bit. Uh, you can count every one of your winds. Or you can get them close in this. I generally try to count everything. Uh, the exact number I don't have right offhand. Uh, anyway, just get it close. Whatever you do on this one, just make sure you do it on the other ones. Alright, we got a little bit more to go on this one. And what I did on this is I put two different colors on here on the wire so you can see them when we're done. It looks better. Anyway, oops, dropped it. Tighten it back up. Turn it over. And we're just about done. A couple more wraps and this thing is good to go. Again, just make sure you don't hook up any corners here. And you should be good to go on this. Now when you have it that way, you bend it back over the side. That makes it stay there. Go ahead and take your little nippers here and uh, cut it off now you got your coil take the top piece off now we're going to pull this out make sure you pull the wires off the edge so now we got we got it we are using AWG 20 so our uh, wire size is 20 gauge so we're just going to cut a little piece of tape here. Just make sure you uh, not too long. Just a little bit. Probably what, like three inches or so. And then here's the important part. When you put this on, you're going to want to tighten the coil as you wrap the tape. So just get it started. And pull that tape tight as you turn it. Get that coil to pull together. See, I'm tightening it there. Nice and tight. Pull it together. And then this will be good to go right here on that one side. Makes it a little thinner. You see the other side's a little bigger. Just keep doing the same thing. We'll get all four sides. Here we go. Now, as far as the number of turns, it's not necessarily important in the testing phase. It will be in the uh, final piece, but we're so far away from that. 
that as long as you get them to look fairly close, you should be okay. Again, the more precise that you are, the better understanding you'll get of everything and fine-tuning it and everything else. But I'm just going to tell you flat out, if you just want to do something like this, something simple, just put them together and make them the same size. So it's all, it's all about testing a little later and see how we do things. Because I don't think these are my final coils by any means. But they are part of testing it out. So there we go. That's what it looks like. We got all four on there. And I'll go ahead and show you what they look like compared to the uh, coils I made. I made. So here we go. You can see them right here. I had already wound several of them. And uh, as you can see, you put the red ones in there and the green ones. Just so you guys can see what's going on here. Make it a little easier. When they go in, they'll overlap. So, that's pretty, so, pretty easy right there. Anyway, you guys got to get the idea here. We're going to overlap them as we go around. And uh, we have plenty of coils. Now, we don't necessarily have to do it all the way around at first. Maybe uh, maybe four spots, do a set of three coils, two on the back side, one on the uh, center side, which is a green. As you can see here, when we made our 3D printed uh, models, we went in and put the coil on top, and it go ahead and it fits just right. It's the right size. So again, I'll make that uh, 3D print available for you to wind the coils with. Okay, this is how I built mine. If you have a better way to do it, by all means do it. Uh, I'm not out here to judge anybody. I'm just trying to help people who have never done this before get to the point where they can accomplish some of these things. You get this done. Anyway, thanks for watching.